Hello everyone, today I would like to talk about early blight disease of potatoes and tomatoes. As you know, early blight disease is a very severe disease of potatoes and tomatoes worldwide. So, so therefore, today I have prepared this special lecture on early blight disease. In previous lectures, I have covered lead blight and many other diseases, but today I will talk about early blight disease extensively, so let's begin. So today's lecture contents are introduction. I will introduce a libelite disease in detail and then I will talk about symptoms on potatoes and tomatoes and then I will describe the disease cycle, how the pathogen infect the potatoes and then finally I would like to talk about the management, how can we control this disease. And finally, I would like to give the references of those researchers from where I have got this information. So first of all, introduction. You know, the name is early blight, but that doesn't mean that disease infect the plants very early or that doesn't mean the disease infect the lower leaves, sorry, the disease infect the younger leaves, that doesn't mean. So what is meaning? The name is early blight, but the foliar septums, but the foliar septums usually occur on older leaves. So keep keep in mind, don't be confused with early. But remember, these foliar septums usually occur on older leaves. Early blight is caused by an imperfect fungus, and that is Alternaria solani. What is meaning by imperfect fungus? Actually, imperfect fungus are also called anamorphic fungus or mitosporic fungus. Taxonomy, taxonomically, are deteromycetes. They are in the group deteromycetes. But still, in the, the definition of imperfect fungi is not clear. So, in the next sentence, it will be clear. So, actually, imperfect fungus or imperfect fungi are those fungi whose sexual form of reproduction has never been observed. So remember this. Those fungi whose sexual form of reproduction has never been observed are known as imperfect fungi. So Alternaria sulani is an imperfect fungi because its sexual reproduction is still not observed. So Alternaria sulani is a sexual form asexual form. This asexual form, when we talk about asexual form, so these fungi produce spores, conidia, asexually. As asexual form is not observed or is not present or absent. We can't say absent, uh, but we can say that has never been observed. So, the, these fung, fungi produce conidia asexually. And the fourth, fifth point, sixth point is this. Alternaria solani is a necrotrophic fungus. What is meaning by necrotrophic fungus? Necrotrophic fungus means it kills the host tissue using cell wall degrading enzymes and toxin and feeds on the dead plant cell material. It means that it kills the potatoes and tomatoes tissues first and then feed on those tissues. So it is necrotrophic fungus. And in this picture shows this the conidia of Alternaria solani. Conidia of Alternaria solani. As you can see, uh, these are the and trans transfer septa here and this is a beak this is called a long beak so later we discuss what are these so as I have told you in the fungus Alternaria solani is necrotrophic fungus it kills the host by producing enzymes and toxins so what 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 kind of toxin so this fungus produce two types of toxin host specific toxin or non non host specific toxin. Host specific toxin are those 
drugs in which are specific to host for example these are secondary molecules i mean to say these are secondary metabolites which infect potatoes but not tomatoes so and so those toxins are called host specific toxins and some toxins are non host specific toxin they can uh, become toxic to tomatoes they can become toxic to potatoes so alternaria solani produce both type of toxin host specific toxin and non host specific toxin if you will see this diagram here so even the host specific toxin host specific toxin even the host specific toxin becomes specific to particular organelles like acr toxin infect mitochondria but acr toxin cannot infect the chlorophyll similarly similarly ac toxin infect the plasmodesmata but as uh, ak toxin infect the plasmodesmata but ak toxin cannot infect the endoplasmic reticulum so even host specific toxin are specific to the organelles so remember this so alternaria solani produces two type of toxin host specific toxins or non host specific toxins what are the host of early blight disease the host of early blight disease tomatoes potatoes eggplant bell pepper and heart pepper and other members of family solanaceae and but remember this not only alternaria solani is involved in early blight sometime sometime many other species are involved several different alternaria species have been associated with early blight disease of tomatoes and potatoes like when we are doing morphological studies so alternaria grandis is also in also causing the symptoms like early blight disease similarly in tomatoes another species uh, alternaria tomatophila is causing a libellaid disease and uh, in cucurbits and tomatoes together then uh, another species another species of alternaria that is called alternaria linearia so it means that not only alternaria solani is involved but many other species can cause the early blight disease and alternaria solani alternaria tomatophila alternaria linari they are, they produce very big size spores i mean big size conidia so they are also known as large spore species but there are some species like alternaria alternata alternaria tenuissima and alternaria arborescens they produce very small spores small size spores and those species are called small spore species i would like to explain this in with a diagram look here you know this is these spores are alternaria alternata spores and these spores are alternaria alternaria tenuissima spores but look the difference what is the difference they are small spore species chain of conidia which are big the conidia are a taste like chain the conidia are a taste like chain and this beak beak the tip the tip the beak is very small so 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 you can see but what when we talk about this alternaria linaria and alternaria solani so you can see spore and conidia conidia and is long beak look and here long beak long beak so these two have long beak so large spores isolates a species with conidia ended by typical long beaks but this this has no beak they are in the form of cluster in the form of clumps like this this species alternaria consortialis it is clumps clump of conidia without beak this is just group of conidia 
without beak. So you can see morphologically how the Alternaria species are different from each, each other. But these Alternaria species are causing the same, same symptoms like Alibolite disease, like Alternaria sulani. So with the advanced studies, with the advanced research, uh, it become very complicated which species is actually involved in early blight diseases because the number of Alternaria species is increasing day by day. So, so now you have understood. Not only Alternaria sulani, all these Alternaria species are can causing early blight disease symptoms like Alternaria sulani. So you have to remember this. At any way, in plantations in the US, Australia, UK, Brazil, India, losses due to early blight disease range from 35 to 80 percent. So whether early blight disease caused by Alternaria sulani, Alternaria alternata, but losses are there. They are causing severe losses like 35 to 80 percent in some cases. And they also reduce the tuber quality and they reduce the yield and sometimes losses reaches up to 20 to 30 percent. And now symptoms. As you can see in, in this is that this is a tomato stem, you can see brown sunken or dry uh, concentric ridges are prone sunken layers on the stems just above soil line. This is soil line and just above soil line then what will happen and then then this plant will damping up, will go damping up and on the leaves you can see bull's eye are concentric ridges like this. So small dark spots form on older foliage larger spots, bull's eye pattern, leaf layer, concentric rings. So the rings are the concentric on the leaves. So th these are the bull's eye. Remember this bull's eye is the characteristic symptoms of this disease. So on the leaves they form bull's eye type septum. And on fruits, the fruits become leathery black here you can see here and the rings concentric rings like this so on tomatoes this kind of septums but on potatoes so the same septums on the leaves the concentric concentric rings on the leaves and uh, and on tubers you can see potato tubers sunken irregular lean and leathery this become leathery corky and finally the whole potatoes become rot and the quality of potatoes reduce no one will no one will be willing to buy this kind of potatoes yeah and on the stem you can see here the lesion the big lesion uh, but this is uh, this is in the form of concentric rings like so you can see the septums on the stem so the characteristic septums of olive light are the concentric rings remember this so this was all about the septums now we will talk about the disease cycle disease cycle yes you can see this this is a disease cycle of a level eye disease so if the farmers are not removing this Infected tubers, infected tomato fruits, infected leaves, and infected stems, and infected plant debris, the fungus is there. In the next season, the fungus will cause severe losses. So, as you know, alibolite disease septums are on these tubers, and uh, this plant has color rot and damping up, this is damping up and a label light cast laying on the stem, on the tomato leaf and the fruit has rot and legend on potato tubers. 
So these are all the source of inoculum for the next crops. So before harvesting, sorry, after harvesting, we should remove all these debris. We should eradicate these plant debris, these volunteer plants from the field. Otherwise, these will be the source of inoculum for the next season. If uh, we will not remove from the field, then the fungus is there, early blight disease is there, it is overwintering on this structure. So, second thing, conidia or mycelium overwinter in infected plant debris on seeds and tubers. They are now there. So, in the next season, when early blight finds a new plant, then what, what, what conidia is there? So the conidia, the spore, the conidia spore, same thing. Conidium as conidia of early blight disease will germinate. And they will germinate if the temperature is about 28 to 30 degrees centigrade, they will germinate. When they germinate, they can infect and the plants and the potato plants or tomato plants directly, that is called direct penetration, or they can enter through the wounds, penetration through wounds, or they can enter into the crop or plant through wounds or through direct penetration. And when they enter, they then they invade the whole leaves, the whole stem, the whole uh, fruits, as you can see, they have now invaded. Now the highway of early blight is within the tissues of the leaf and within the tissues of the fruits. Then after seven days or two days, depending on the environmental condition, the septums will appear on the leaves, on the fruits. So what will happen then when the septums will appear, then the conidia of these are the conidia. Conidia will come out. The plant tissues become ruptured, uh, and then conidia will come out, and then this conidia will again infect plant. So then, they, then the cycle goes on. Then the cycle goes on, goes on, goes on, goes on. In the same season, in the same season, conidia produce. They infect the plant. Conidia produce. They infect the plant. Conidia produce. So in the same season, many times the conidia is infecting plants, and in this way, what would happen? In that kind of uh, cycle is called polycyclic. An early blight disease is a polycyclic disease and the pathogen is polycyclic pathogen. So remember this because in the same season, in the same season and the plant is infecting and then uh, producing conidia, then infecting, then producing conidia. So in this way the cycle has been, has com completed. When the, when the uh, graph has reached to maturity or when the graph has reached to to harvesting stage then the plant has become now disease if the farmers will not remove these infected tubers infected fruits infected leaves infected stems from the field and, and then, then then this will be the source of inoculum for the uh, next crop so the cycle has now completed and the second most important thing is here and the early blight disease in fact when the weather is warm when weather should be warm and humid and temperature should be in range in in the, in this range 24 to 29 degrees centigrade and in this conditions and the early blight disease will infect tomatoes and potatoes crop so we have completed the disease cycle of this disease here now now our last topic is is management so for the management we should go for cultivars cultivars yes we have cultivars you can grow resistant cultivars but uh, one problem is this a complete resistant to early blight doesn't exist in commercial potato or tomato cultivars. Complete resistant to early blight is it doesn't exist. So 
You can't say that every potato cultivar has a complete resistance against every potato or tomato cultivar has complete resistance against early blight disease. You can't say like this. Complete resistance is impossible. If 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 if, if any cultivar has a complete resistance, then after six years, five years, it resistance will break down. And our next management is culture practices. Culture practices uh, like good drainage and good air movement. Don't plant too dense row to row and plant plant uh, distance should be maintained. And if the as I have told you, if there is infected tubers, if there is infected plant debris from, from up the previous uh, season, uh, leftovers leaves remove all this eliminate all this from the field and keep the field clean and they also remove the volunteer plants because uh, early blight disease can overwinter on volunteer plants like weeds plant debris remove plant debris remove weeds and which can harbor the disease and only uh, certified seed tubers should be planted by certified seed tubers and minimize the time that leaves are wet to help prevent foliar infection and excessive fertilization should be avoided. Drip irrigation, we recommend drip irrigation. Foliar uh, irrigation can cause uh, plants leaves to become wet and then aldebolite can easily infect. So chemical control, in chemical control we have pro protect 10 fungicide and uh, we need to apply this fungicide before disease, before disease. If you apply this fungicide before disease so they can protect the crop from the aldebolite disease but I am not sure about this uh, whether these are still and effective against alternaria against aldebolite disease or not and uh, about their uh, hazard behavior because most of the fungicide have hazardous behavior and they are not eco-friendly um, i'm not sure about this as i didn't uh, read any information about these two fungicide about their effectiveness as well as about their harmful harm effect harmful effects on environment i didn't read about that maybe in future if i will read and maybe i will discuss with you guys so the other fungicide are the QAnon outside inhibitors can why uh, they are very good they are effective they are systemic and uh, systemic they can uh, be absorbed by plants and they can eliminate the alternaria solani but uh, uh, there are few reports that resistance in some of the alternaria solani strains have emerged against this fungicide and finally biological control we can control alibli disease by pseudomonas species like pseudomonas fluorescent and the Pudita and we can also control uh, alveolar disease by Trichoderma and Bacillus species. So finally I would like to give references from where I have organized this lecture and first of all I would like to thanks to this um, Mukesh Mina and uh, his co-authors and they have written a very good uh, review article on alternaria toxins uh, and I have studied these toxins and this is kind of advanced study and the other, the other very good paper is alternaria host specific toxins as alternaria level disease produces many toxins as I have talked talk in, in the previous slides and finally, I would also like to thank you, American Phytopathological Society webpage, and they have described uh, early blight disease, 
and uh, finally i would also like to thank you university of minnesota extension some of the tomato figures i have copied from this um, web page uh, in the part to deliver for this lecture so uh, i would like to thank you all of you all of sorry i would like to thank you all of these people who have contributed to control early black disease finally i would also like to thank you all of you who are hearing or listening or watching this lecture so i would like to thank you all of you and uh, thank you